Now, number four here. Again, there's a three-dimensional drawing of it, but the only thing of interest is really just this end face composed of that right-angled triangle and the circle, which is meant to sit somewhere inside it. And the information it gives is that the radius of this tank is one metre. Those are the lengths that are in metre there. And it says, what's the equation of the outer rim of the front end of the cylinder? In other words, what's the equation of that circle? And it says you're taking the origin as this point here at the right-angled corner of those two beams. Well, that's the case, would it say? Now, if the radius of this is 1, that means that, that distance is 1, and that distance is 1, which immediately gives you the coordinates of the centre, we can call that C. So now straight away, the centre of that circle is 1, 1. And the other thing it said was, the radius is 1, so immediately you can just feed it into x minus a squared, y minus b squared, equals r squared, the transformed formula for the equation of a circle. And feeding those numbers in, that means you've got x minus 1 squared, y minus 1 squared equals 1 squared. Multiply the brackets, square the first, twice the product, square the last, square the first, twice the product, square the last. Bring it all together with the squared terms first, then the x and the y terms, and finally the numbers, there's only one left. So it all equals to 0. And there it is. There's the equation of that circle. The second part says the equation of the roof girder AB. Well, that's a line, so I just need to know what's its gradient and a point on it. Notice if this is acting as the axis, I know the point where it cuts the right axis, so I can use the simple formula. And as far as the gradient's concerned, well, there's the two numbers for up and along. I know the difference in y. So I know the gradient of AB straight away. I know the distance up, and I know the distance along. It's going 2.5, rather it's going 2.5 down, so it's negative 2.5 for 5 along. So that means the gradient of AB is negative a half. So straight away I've got the equation of the line, y equals mx plus c. I don't need to use y minus b, x minus a, because that's not a general form I need here. I know a specific point, I know where it cuts the y-axis. So y equals negative a half x plus 2.5 or doubling it all up, I've got 2y is negative x plus 5 into any formula like that would do. Or maybe I'll just put in the form of x plus 2y equals 5, oh, or minus 5 equals 0. Any form would do. So there's the first two parts. Now the last part, the architect has calculated the tank will fit just under the roof. Is that correct? Explain. Well, it will fit in there as long as it's not too big as long as it either just touches AB or is within AB. In other words, as long as AB is a tangent or an external line to the circle. It would be no use if the line AB was to cut the circle twice. That's what you're going to do. Find the potential points of intersection between these two equations. I'll call that one. Now this one, I'm going to have to use this in the form of a substitution. I don't want to use y equals, because that's going to be halves. So I'll use it in the form of x equals. So x would be 5 minus 2y. So I'm looking for another intersection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 2 in 1. So wherever I see x, I write 5 minus 2y. x again, 5 minus 2y. Then it's just back to 2y plus 1 equals 0. In each case, the x has been replaced by 5 minus 2y. Multiply that bracket. Square the first. Twice the product. Product 10. So double that. 20 minus 20y. Square the last plus 4y squared, that's another y squared, multiply this bracket, minus 10, but plus 4y, minus 2y, plus 1 equals 0. There's only three types of terms, so gather it up to form the quadratic, and that's going to be 5 lots of y squared. In terms of the y's, you've got minus 22 plus 4 is minus 18y, and in terms of the numbers, I've got 25, 15 plus 1, that's going to be 16 equals 0. Now it's just a case of how many answers does that have? And the way you'll find that is just by getting the discriminant. So what, what's the discriminant? What's b squared minus 4ac? It's going to be negative 18 squared minus 4 times the first times the last. So that's going to be, well that one's easy because that's 320 and that's 324. Unfortunately, because that means the answer is 4, that means that this expression would have factorised. If the discriminant's a perfect square, the quadratic would factorise because you can have rational roots. 
But that's not the main concern here. The main concern here is you are going to have answers. So staying with this, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, which means that line 1 intersects... What's line 2? Line 2 intersects circle 1 in two places, which means that the tank wouldn't fit. There. Now, that's the end of that particular question. However, an interesting question, just to illustrate other techniques involved with circles, would be, what would the size, what would be the maximum size of the circle that would fit into that roof space? Obviously, the radius 1 is too big, so what is the maximum radius? It's not the question, but it's just an interesting piece of geometry to be able to do. So what about this question then? What would be the maximum radius of that tank? Well, first thing I think I'll do is I'll change them all into rational numbers. So I'll make that 5 upon 2. And then the way this will be done is you try and find nice shapes within that. Usually you look for right angle triangles. There's no point in thinking that if you draw a line from the origin through the centre, it's going to form a nice right angle triangle here and then have similar triangles. Because quite obviously that's got a gradient of a half or negative half rather. But from the origin to that point must be a gradient of one, so they're not going to meet any angles. So I'm going one there. But what you can do is this: you can form tangent kites because whatever the radius is, if that's the radius, then so is that. In fact, I could form pairs of tangent, uh, sorry, ca tangent kites all over the place. I could have this tangent kite here, another one here. There's that one there, but of course that one just turns into a square. Although strictly speaking, it's a subset of the tangent kites, and then. Use the fact that, since they form kites, the sides must be the same. So I'm using the fact that these two lengths must be the same. So I want expressions for these two lengths. Well, I could give them names, I'll call, them, call that P and Q. So I want an expression for BP and expression for BQ. Maybe I'll move this up a wee bit here. This 5 upon 2, because maybe I'll call that R as well, this point here. Well, I know that... If that, that's the radius, if the radius is R, it must be R in. So the part PB must be 5 minus R. I want an expression for BQ. Well, BQ would be the hypotenuse minus this part. Well, I can do an expression for that part. AR, I can put that over here. AR is going to be 5 upon 2, being the whole lot, minus the radius, minus R. Another thing get, and now I can get the length of a, B. Maybe I could put that under here. Now, I could get A, B by doing Pythagoras, or I could recognise the fact that I've got a 1, 2 for the simple sides. So the simple sides of that triangle are just 1 and 2, and immediately from 1 and 2, you've got 1 and 4, that makes that root 5. So that must be, if it goes 1, 2, root 5, and it's 5 up and 2 times it, it must be 5 up and 2, root 5. Or well, you could do the Pythagoras yourself if you liked. 5 squared plus 5 upon 2 squared, etc. It would still come out of the same result, same, with the same result. That means that QB, going from Q to B, would be the whole length, which is 5 upon 2 root 5, minus length, this length here, because AQ must be the same as that, minus the 5 upon 2, minus r. I could maybe tidy that expression up a little bit. So I've got 5 up in 2 root 5 minus 5 up in 2 but plus an r. I could always take the 5 up in 2 out of that. 5 up in 2 times root 5 minus 1 plus the r. So I've got the lengths of these two parts. There's the lengths of the two sides of this tangent kite. In which case they must be the same. From P to B must be the same as from Q to B, or you could use letters the other way around. That means that 5 minus R is the same as 5 up in 2, root 5 minus 1, plus R. Bring the R's to one side. Oh, I'm going to bring it to that side, so that gives me a 2R. Bring that over to that side, and it'll be 5, take away 5 up in 2, root 5 minus 1. Now it's just a case of tidying this up to get a nice expression for it. So you can multiply it out, or just make that all into halves, maybe. 
So I've got 5 into the halves would be 10. Maybe I could multiply it out at the same time. So it'll be minus 5 root 5, but plus 5. And then R would equal, well I could tidy that up. That's going to be 15 minus 5 root 5 over 2 and bring that over as well over 4 or taking out that 5 as a common factor 5 upon 4 times 3 minus root 5 for the exact answer for the radius well you could put it into a calculator and get 0 0.9549 and so on meters which was why 1 meter was too big in the first place there an example of using tangent kites in a figure.